week's been one of those busy weeks, crazy busy weeks, uh, making sure everything got done for the back to school bash. And, and so my prayer time has been, God, show me what you want me to do. God, show me what you want me to do. God, show me what you want me to do. And he gave me a line this week. And, and literally, um, I, I've been stressed, to be honest. I, I'm not comfortable with not knowing where we're going. And sometimes God says, if I'd have told you where we're going, uh, you wouldn't have went in the first place, right? Uh, so the line that he gave me was this. I am still the God of miracles. I am still the God of miracles. I am still the God of miracles. From needing a job, to needing peace, to overcoming fear, to cancer, to heart problems, to diabetes. Everyone in this room, if you will admit it, you need a miracle from God. You need Him to do something in your life. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please God. And those that come to God must believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. And as God began to minister to me this week, and really, to be honest with you, the message is as much for me as it is for you. But the thing that He began to show me was this. He said, You believe that I am in what you've seen me do, but you don't always believe that I am in the things that you've never seen me accomplish yet. But I'm still the God of miracles. When it comes to my mom and dad, between the two of them, there's been 20 heart surgeries. When they call me and tell me my mom's heart's acting up, okay, whatever, we'll get through this. God's done it 20 times before. But when they called and said, your father has mesothelioma and there's no cure, I had never seen God do that. My faith had to rise above. I didn't need to believe that God did part the Red Sea. I didn't need to believe that he was coming in glory. I needed to be that he, know that he was alive and well and in that hospital room at that very moment. How many need to know today? And don't give me this, I'll be good, this hogwash answer. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. Then why are your knuckles white? Why are your fingernails chewed to the bone? Why are you not believing? Hebrews 6, 11 says, we must believe that he is. Not that he was, not that he will be, but that he is. So let me tell you some things in life, if you'll listen for just a moment, some things in life that the enemy tells us that we believe. There's no cure for your type cancer. There's no cure for that. They've got autism. Oh no, well my child's autistic. I don't know what I'm going to do. They're autistic. They're Down syndrome. Well, they're just always going to be. Why do we buy into what the enemy says is the gospel of Jesus Christ when God said if we have faith and believe in Him that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him? Faith. Because He's still a miracle working God. In the Old Testament, he parted the waters. He brought water from rocks. He made an axe head float. Do you know what I do today if I lose my axe in the water? I go to Hoy's and buy another axe. But what would happen if I have no Hoy's and I have no funds and I need God to move? Do I have enough faith to make the axe head get up and swim back to me? Raise the dead. There were three men in a fiery furnace. And their statement was this. Whether he saves me or not, he's still my God. Whether he delivers me or not, he's still my God. Do you know the faith that it takes to say, throw me in a fiery furnace? I'm going to let God be God in my life no matter what's going on when I can't even get past autism for a child. Now, if you're the child with autism,
Calvinism. I'm not talking down to you. Hear me when I say this. Why do we accept the report of the world when God said, well, you don't come back from this, the world says, okay. Well, I've seen God heal heart problems 20 times in my family. But I've never seen him as a theologian. What happens when we displease God because we don't believe that he is? In the New Testament, Jesus turned water into wine. He literally, uh, in John chapter 2, he healed a dead man he, that, with a spoken word. He healed the issue of blood. He cast out demons. He, he literally paid his taxes out of a fish's mouth. Why is God's people walking without faith? Let me go on. Let me go on. Some of the saints, Peter, the lame was healed, prison doors were opened, the dead raised, prayer cloths, shadows, viper bites, they were healed from those shadows, healed people. Listen to what Scripture says. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus said, I am the same yesterday and today and forever. Why can I believe that he parted the Red Sea, but I cannot believe that he can handle my financial trouble that I'm in? Why can I believe that he can raise the dead, but he cannot heal the sickness that is inside my body? Why can I believe that when the doctor says the baby's got Down syndrome, why can I believe that God can do anything, anywhere, anytime except my situation? Except what's going on in my life. Malachi 3.6 For I am the Lord, I change not. John 14, 12 through 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. The question is asked, why is not God not doing the miracles today that he did back then? Yet he said, in the last day I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. You will see signs and wonders. Is it possible that we've become so believing of what the world says that we truly don't have the faith we once had? Is it possible that we do not believe that the miracles of yesterday and the miracles of the future are for us today? I'm crying out to God. I slept less than an hour last night saying, God. And he said, I am the same God. I am still a miracle working God. You tell them that I am still a miracle working God. If they will believe, if they will make the effort and push forward. But share some things with you. Do you know why I'm crying? Because I need this. I need to believe beyond. Good preaching last week, Michael. Beyond. Roxley Doss. 2018. Roxley Doss. Brain cancer. If you go to belief.net or Charisma magazine, you can see the pictures of the cancer eating her brain. There's no cure, there's no hope. They're working to do the best that they can. They go back and take another MRI and the doctor says, we don't know what happened. But there is no cancer. It is completely gone. This was just a few months ago. An 11-year-old girl documented that cancer, no cancer, gone. God is still a miracle working God. When they asked her mother what happened, 
Trenton McKinley, 13, in an accident, died four times. He was dead for over 15 minutes. They literally brought the parents in to sign the order, organ, the organ donor card. And all of a sudden, a brain that had not given, given any began to move. Today, this young man is as healthy as you and I, and he's normal. There are no issues whatsoever because we still serve a miracle working God. Give him praise to God. Lynn Grobeck, Utah, 25 years old, rolls her car down a bank into a frozen river. The police say she died on impact. Fourteen hours later, they're looking <coughs> for her. And the police and the firemen say, I heard an adult voice calling out to me, help me, I'm down here. Help me, I'm down here. When they got to the car, the 14-month-old baby had been hanging for 14 hours upside down within inches of a frozen river and she was perfectly fine. She wasn't able to speak, yet they heard a voice calling out because of a miracle working God that said, come help my child. And I can't trust him for my financial issue. The God that opened prison doors and I can't trust him to fix this. Ruby Cos Cosmero, dead for 45 minutes. They called the family in to say goodbye. The machines are unhooked. And as the family walks in, her heart begins to beat again. No damage whatsoever. The only explanation is, they serve a miracle working God. Gardell Martin, 22 months old, falls into a freezing river. He's found a quarter of a mile later, dead. For 101 minutes, his 77 degree body was given CPR. Almost two hours. And suddenly, our miracle in his heart began to beat again. Within 24 hours, the doctor says, this isn't possible, but there's going to be no damage whatsoever. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says that we are not to conform to this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Yet if we are honest with ourselves, each and every person in this room needs God to do something for you. And today would be a good day for him to do that. Yet there is doubt inside of us because we have seen this before. He doesn't heal me, man. You don't get better from that. You don't get better from this. You don't do that. There's no option. There's no way. And so what do we do? We speak death into this situation. Well, he's just a rotten husband. She needs to get rid of him. What if we believe in a miracle-working God that can transform a rotten husband into a good husband and he can heal and he can set free and he can break his bones? Tiki Finlayson, son killed by a drunk driver. God gave her a miracle of forgiveness. She went to that jail every week and met with that drunk driver. She led her to the Lord. She carried this woman until she was released from jail. She brought her to her home and she made sure she was taken care of. And I can't forgive my neighbor. Yet the miracle working God that I serve gives forgiveness. And the church today is dying because we can't let go of a little issue. We're struggling because our faith doesn't rise above. And he said we must believe that he is. Not that he parted the Red Sea. Not that he has split the eastern sky. But we must 
six-month doctor's appointments that I usually squeak out to about 14 months before they make me come or they cut me off. sugar out there, I'm going to eat it. If it's not out there, I'm going to go buy it. <coughs> Yet rather than believe in God for my healing, <coughs> I just accept what the doctor says. Rather than to believe God, because I've done this to myself, right? Ronnie Rhodes, he'd up with cancer, went to Bethesda, Maryland, to the hospital there as a guinea pig. They said, we're going to basically see what will work. This was back in the 70s. They opened him up, they looked inside, they sewed him back up and said, you're done. If you'd like, we'll try some crazy chemo stuff. All his hair fell out. He gave his heart to Jesus. He said, gets out of the hospital and goes over to a revival with a woman with a Bible about this big preaching. And he said a three-legged dog ran in and a four-legged dog ran out. Same dog. <laughs> but we don't buy that though, do we? That's not the way our God works. Ask Coach about his dog with a crushed spine ran over by his dooley and he called out to God, a miracle-working God, and the dog began to raise up. Ask my oldest son about the Dalmatian that drank a quart of antifreeze and was coughing up parts of its stomach and the doctor said, make her comfortable. And he says, God, heal my dog. And this stupid thing lived another 11 years. <laughs> because the faith of that little child called out to a God that he believed and he trusted right here, right now, for his situation, and God said, you got it. If I can hold the sun back, but yet here's what happens. I preach on faith, and people come up and say, you just don't understand how bad it is. You just don't get it. I just want to go, don't you understand how good he is? <laughs> Don't you understand that he's still a miracle-working God? That his desire and his heart's passion is to set you free. God brought this to my memory this morning. I'm almost done. I was a little tyke about like this. And about that light. <laughs> it's not true, it wasn't. It was small. My uncle Jim Gates was eat up with throat cancer. There's probably a different name for it now, but that's what they called it in the day. And he was down to 62 pounds. And we watched him stop breathing, and they'd set him up and shake him, and he'd start breathing again. And the doctor said, all you do is don't even call us anymore. Just call the coroner to come and get him. One morning, I'm little. One morning, he goes, gravy. Gravy. <laughs> when your dying family asks for gravy, you make some gravy. So they made some gravy. They put a little on a biscuit. And they put it in his mouth knowing we're going to clean it up in a minute because he's going to throw it right back up. He hasn't eaten in months. And it doesn't come back. Two years later, I'm about 12, and he's out in his garden working when his wife dies in the house. And about two and a half years after that, he goes home to be with the Lord, cancer free. The doctor said, don't call us. There's no point. But God said, I'm still a miracle working God. 
We resign ourselves to believe what the enemy has taught us to believe. And I hate this word, but we have been programmed to believe things. If you're on social media, you'll know what I'm talking about. Every other thing that comes across your social media is programming you for something. I took a picture of a set of tires that I liked on my son's Jeep, and the next ad that I had on social media was that tire company. They looked at my pictures in my phone. They programmed me. And God said that I would not be conformed to this world. Denise and Skidmore, that's just what I'll call it. Everywhere we went, he wrecked his motorcycle. He slid sideways and crashed. That's what we call it. For eight months, they gave her birth control pills to try to control and regulate the hormones in her body, and they realized she was pregnant. The baby's deformed. It cannot be born. You cannot do this. But she serves a miracle working God. The baby's top in its class now. The baby that's deformed, right? But why is it when it comes to my household, why is it when it comes to my problem and my situation, rather than saying, God, you're bigger than this. You can solve this. You can fix this. I just, oh, so they've got autism? Okay. How do we deal with autism? By taking it to the throne of God with faith, unwavering, and trusting God. Anybody seen that little clip of the autistic boy on America's Got Talent. He'll never be able to speak. But my God, can he sing? Did they watch American Ninja Warrior? And the little guy comes out and he does this and they go, he has severe autism. He can't do anything. And all the athletes... A thousand athletes are getting ready to run this course, and he smokes them all. Because you know why? Because his faith overrode his handicap. I follow a man on Instagram. His name is Try No Feet. And I watch videos almost every day of him hiking up mountains with two little metal springs sticking out where his feet used to be. But why, why, why have we somehow in our minds decided that when the enemy says certain thing, certain thing, that there is no hope anymore? Why do we buy the lie? When they told me my dad had mesothelioma, he was an asbestos worker. We're not talking about being around in a cage. Like this is what he did for 30 years. They told him it'd be fine. No worries. Here, sign this paper. When they knew it would kill him. When they knew that they were murdering him. And when they told us that, it was like we gave up. And I'm fighting doctors, and I'm screaming, and I'm yelling, and I've got this faith that's going to heal him. And he left here. He left here closer to God than he ever was. So it was a good thing that he left. I wouldn't have had him leave, and who knows what would have happened in the future. But why is it that when they called me and said, your dad's going in for another stand in his heart. Okay, tell him don't go through the metal detector. Because I had seen God do it. But there are men and women in this room, and you need a miracle today. Whatever that is, a family member, Whatever that is, that the world has conformed our minds to believe not. When you're doing nothing, Google Murph the Smurf. He will never be released from jail, ever. He was the largest embezzler in the world in the 80s. He will never, ever, ever be released from jail, ever again. I stood beside him as he preached the gospel in Atlanta, Georgia, all over the country. He went with the Bill Glass prison ministry because what the world said, the gate will never open. God opened the prison doors, set him free, set him on fire to move for him. Because a miracle working God changes what the
the enemy says. Last week he preached about talking about the millennials and things. This week I've watched what I've said. And i got to be honest with you, it's not good. So I made a point yesterday to brag on every young man and woman that was working hard. Because I've been one that said they're lazy. They won't do anything. They didn't grow up doing it like we did. They're lazy. And I watched them work hard yesterday. How will they ever be what they're supposed to be if all I can do is speak death into them? When the doctor says, fetal alcohol syndrome, I go, yep, got it. Step. Oh, yeah. Cool. Come on. Now we know what to do. No. 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 I've got to believe that if he can feel leprosy, he can touch anything going on in your child's body. i got to believe if he can raise the dead, that the faith that I need right now for today is that he is able. And I'm going to believe it for my miracle until I leave this earth. I refuse to conform to what the enemy says is the normal. It's time the body of Christ takes Hebrews 11 and begins to birth it in our brain. I must believe that He is. Not was, not will be. He is. Right here, right now, in my situation. I don't feel good, but you know what? I sat down and I'll be damned if I'm going to let the enemy steal God's word for you this morning. Because God's people, they need to take the measure of faith that you were born with and you need to begin to grow it. How are you going to do that? Well, Pastor, I don't know how to do that. Let me tell you how you're going to do that. By conforming not to this world, but being transformed by the Word of God. When the doctor says you got this, stop looking up how bad this is and start looking up in the Word of God how good your God is. Give me praise in the house. I'm tired of hearing the church is failing. I'm tired of hearing that the gospel isn't preached anymore. I challenge you to look up any verse I've given you and deny that I've spoken it to you in the truth. Because everyone in this room needs something today. Whether that's salvation, whether that's a job, whether that's healing for your body, whether that's whatever that is. Well, my child's gone too far. Well, my your child's only gone too far if you gave up. Because God's still on the throne and He's still a miracle working God. Maybe your relationship needs help. Maybe you need help with waiting. Maybe you've got that daunting thing out there that the enemy has said and you accepted it. And today, your miracle is going to be not accepting it anymore. Your miracle is going to be saying no. My God's bigger than that. No. No. No! No. If you need salvation, that's your greatest miracle you'll ever have. But if you need God to touch something else in your life, and here's what I'm asking, and I dare say everyone in the room needs some kind of miracle. Maybe you don't think it's big enough, but to God, it's a miracle and He wants to provide it. So I'm going to ask that you stand with me. I'm going to play another old song. And here's what I'm going to believe for you today. There's a miracle in the making for you today. Your job is to believe. Your job is to believe. 
Your job is not to believe what the enemy said, not to believe what the specialist said, because I know the man that made the specialist, and he's still a miracle worker. While I preach a whole lot about you need to grow yourself, I'm telling you today that God needs to do this for you, and you need to trust Him for it.